Amen. Uh, so, I, I need to ask you this. Don't pay attention to my English. Pay attention to the Word of God. I've been praying today, actually this week, to the Holy Spirit works in my place so I don't have to to do a big work here but the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart amen let's open our Bibles in the book of the the letter to the Galatians uh, from Paul in chapter 5 you know this passage actually you may know very well but I want to speak a little bit of what God has placed in my heart. Um, Galatians 5, verse 22, which is the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible says in verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Verse 23 gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Amen. I, as we've been uh, learning and hearing and listening to this subject of my hope wing souls work for jesus this is all what god called us to do and this is all we we should be doing and it's beautiful to speak it's beautiful to listen to but sometimes we seems to be a little bit comfort in our comfort zones because we received this grace we received the gift of salvation and now we come to the church we serve the Lord we are honest in our life we are good Christians but it's not enough it's not enough I want to start this day telling you something that I heard yesterday I know this man for a while he is from Angola and yesterday when he was teaching he was talking about salvation and he said that he was raised in Angola in this time of war, this time of poor, this time of all kinds of uh, bad things that you can think about. And his father was working in the illegal market of diamonds. There, were, there was this Portuguese man and they were trafficking diamonds and it, it was very dangerous, very, very dangerous. And this Portuguese one day had to go to his country and as a symbol or as a demonstration of gratitude, he gave to this man a bottle full of diamonds he couldn't take it and he gave to this man this bottle full of diamonds but this man was very scared he couldn't keep that bottle because if the army or the security forces catch him he would die it was really illegal so he hide this bottle somewhere and he came to pass and the whole family knew he had this bottle of diamond and they dig holes everywhere looking for this bottle and they 
couldn't find it. And this man that was speaking yesterday, he said that he grew with this pain in his heart because he said, my father was so bad. He could left us this or leave for us this bottle of diamond. And he grew with that uh, feeling and angry, rebellion, and all these bad feelings that we can have as flesh. And one day, he, somebody spoke about Jesus to him. And he came to know Jesus. He came to know Jesus and he received Jesus in his heart. He understood that Jesus was worthy or worthy much, much more than that diamond bottle. And he continue, he li he continues his life with Jesus, now saved, now full of joy, now full of the gift of the Holy Spirit. But he had a friend, and this friend was uh, going into the, this market too, this illegal market, but doing another thing, not diamond, but doing another things, but illegal and very dangerous. And for sometimes the Holy Spirit touched his heart to speak about Jesus to this boy. But he's always, oh, you could come to my, my church someday. You could visit my church someday. And, but he never spoke about Jesus to this man. And one day when he was coming to his house, there was another, another friend of them. And he was crying. And he asked, what happened? He said, you know, the boy, he died. Somebody killed him. And he came to, to, his, to his funeral. And there, at the funeral, the Holy Spirit spoke to his heart. And said, did you invite him? Yes, I invite him. And he said, did you insist with him? Yes, I insist, but you know what? He has his religion. He has his church. He has his way of life. And, you know, I washed my hands. Because, and the third question the Holy Spirit asked him was, how do you feel now? Because if you have insisted, he could be in heaven now instead to be in hell. If you have insisted with him, he could be saved. Or maybe he was alive now, but you didn't insist. And he felt like that was something that he, he needed to learn. And I think this is something that we need to learn. We think about my hope, because it's my hope. If I die today, I know where I'm going. If you die today, you probably know where you're going. And if you don't know, I, I have to advise you that you need to have a relationship, real relationship with Jesus. If you don't know where you're going, you need Jesus desperately because only him can guarantee your eternal life only him and he was speaking yesterday and i was really touched because this last wednesday i was talking to the church and i even wrote in portuguese but i didn't re write in english I was speaking to the church about the Holy Spirit, and when I was talking to the church, the Holy Spirit starts to talk to me. And I feel ashamed. Because 
we think we are doing the work of God, coming to the church every Sunday or twice a week or three times a week, whatever. We think. And I didn't come here today to, to beat you. But I came here today to try to bring you to conscience that we have a work to do. This is something that God has moved in our hearts to be part of. Because we, as people of God, we have a call. And I was, I was thinking this week, what is this Holy Spirit that lives in us? Because if He lives in us, and I, I'd like to, to speak a little bit about who's Him and what He does in us. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says that He attracts us. You cannot come to Jesus without the action of the Holy Spirit. Bible says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. John 16, 8. He will convict. If you are here, it's because someday the Holy Spirit came to you and, told, and, and spoke to your heart saying, come to Jesus. He draw you to Jesus because only through him you can come to Jesus only when he convinced you you can come to Jesus you can't you didn't come to Jesus because you you felt like oh yes this is a good religion oh this is a good church no you're here because the Holy Spirit brought you here today and the Holy Spirit also dwells in us and this is my big question. And I've been asking this all this week to God. Are we talking about the same Holy Spirit? And, and I'm so sorry, but I have to say that. Are we talking about the same Holy Spirit that the Bible says? Because this Holy Spirit he is not just a power of God. He's not just something that empowers us, but He is God. He is God. And when He came to live, to abide inside you, abide in you, He should bring difference to your life. He should bring encouragement to your life. He should bring empowerment to your life in a way that you, you couldn't be quiet you should be talking to everyone like that man when he was healed you go but you don't say who healed you <laughs> it's the same to say go and yell to everybody that I healed you <laughs> because when Jesus comes when Jesus saves us the Holy Spirit comes with him and abides and dwells in us. And it's a big difference to our lives. You are not the same again. You are not the same person again. Now you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if it's not exciting for you, I don't know what should be exciting for you. Because we have to be excited by the fact that Jesus chose us. And he brought the Holy Spirit to live and to dwell in us. And we are sometimes so discouraged with all things that are happening around us. We get so distracted with all this stuff going around us. The Bible says, John 14, 17, the spirit of truth, 
whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But look, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You know him. You know him. Do you know him? I can't answer this for you. I have to answer only for me. For myself. Do I know him? Do I fully know him? Do I really know him? Do I know what he can do in me and through me? Because if I knew him, I could be, I could be doing so much more without fear, without hindrances, without anything. But I could be sorry in his wings over the, the storm going and doing what he called us to do what amazes me is that the Bible says that he enables us but you shall receive power you know this very well and we love it <laughs> we love it we you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth Acts 1 8 and how we use it how we love to use it Oh, we will receive power. Power for what? For what? Because we, I'm talking about we, about us, not you, us. We leave the church and we forget this power. We forget that He empowered us to be His witnesses. And, and when I say we do it, I'm not talking that you do it. I know many of you have been witness about Jesus. I know many of you have been working to Jesus. I know many of you have been doing or doing what Jesus called you to do. But I'm just saying that God put this word in my heart. And probably he wants to speak to me. But maybe he wants to speak to you too. And I want to tell you because I couldn't hold myself this week. Because when I was teaching the church, the Spirit just starts to talk to me. And I couldn't sleep that night. Because... I came to this point that He enables us. And when I look to the disciples' lives, I, I, I don't understand and I can't come to an agreement if this is the same, if we are talking about the same Holy Spirit. Because when I go to Acts 20, in verse 22 to 24, Paul is saying, and I, and see, look, I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And another translation says that the Spirit compels me, compels me to go. And not knowing the things that will happen to me there. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me. 
nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. I was astonished this week because this man and we love to talk about Paul because he's an example for us but we live in this freedom country free country we have this freedom we can do whatever we want right we can go wherever wherever we want we can speak whatever we want we have the freedom to speak but we are Christians and this man is saying the Holy Spirit compels me to go he is taking me to this place he's pushing me to this place the word compels means to wrap and bring to some place wrapped so you don't have will you don't have desire you don't have uh, choice you have to go because the Holy Spirit compels and how many times the, the Holy Spirit compels us to do some kind of work but you think oh, I think it's my emotion I think I'm thinking something and, and the Holy Spirit is saying do this or do that or speak this to this person but or sometimes we don't hear or we can't hear anymore the Holy Spirit we get so used to the things that we have to do for our lives that we don't hear the Holy Spirit anymore and for many times we lose the opportunity to be used in his hands and to do exactly what he called us to do look that Jesus gave us a commandment and this is part of our wall here go therefore and make disciples and you may you may say well our pastor is doing that he's good at that he's really good yeah pastor Ron knows how to do that but the Bible says to the disciples Jesus commanded to the disciples and we I, I think I already spoke it here but there is a great difference between being a Christian and being a disciple the church today are doing Christians are making Christians but Jesus commanded us to to make disciples and it's very difficult to make disciples because disciples today they have their own will they have their own desires they don't want to do what the master want have to teach they don't want to do what the master needs to teach them and they, they don't want to follow I have my own life this man he was a disciple he was he, he had in his heart the desire to do what God commanded him to do I'm going to the Jerusalem and in another passage he said I'm going to Jerusalem and a certain prophet came uh, found his belt somewhere and said the owner of this belt the, thus says the Lord this guy is going to Jerusalem and he will be imprisoned in Jerusalem he will be beat he will be everything in Jerusalem he will suffer in Jerusalem and the, the other disciples came to Paul Paul don't go Paul please don't go and this is what I see the church doing today be arrested be in prison are you crazy pastor no don't preach there pastor we have another places to preach we have another things to do but Paul said stop stop 
I'm not ready only to suffer for Jesus, but I'm ready to die for Jesus. And this is the point that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Because we live in a generation that is content in living for Jesus. Oh, I love to live for Jesus. He's amazing. He changed my life. He's a blessing to me. He gives me everything I want. I love Jesus. But are you ready to die for Jesus? And I'm not saying go and die. I'm not trying to make terrorists here. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no bombers. <laughs> I'm just saying that Jesus said in Revelation, be faithful to death and I will give you the crown of life. Jesus is not saying, okay, you have to be Christian until you die, okay? He was saying, even if you need to die for the sake of my name, you have to be faithful. And if you be faithful, even if you have to die for my name's sake, you will receive the crown of the life. But we love to live for Jesus. And we love to say that we have the Holy Spirit within us, but we don't act as we have the Holy Spirit within us. And I, I, I can't go on. I wish I could. Because I'm not... What I want to tell you today or talk about today is the result of the first action of the Holy Spirit in our lives after He comes to live in us. To live in us. Because when He came to live in you, he starts to do a change or a transformation because it's a process. You get saved in the same moment. But then you have this process of changing, of transformation. And as a result of this transformation, we have to produce fruit. This is the result. I can't say I have the Holy Spirit and live the same way I used to live. We have to produce His fruit. And then... We have... After we have His fruit being produced in us, which we read today, we have to produce fruit for his kingdom. For his kingdom. When we go, when we see John, I, I won't read it. John 15, Jesus talking about the branches, the vine, the farmer, and all this picture that Jesus uh, draw that time for the disciples to understand. He talks about at least three things that I understand and I want, I want to, to try to communicate it to you. The, in, order, in order to have a fruitful life in the Spirit, because we said that we have the Spirit, so your life have, has to be fruitful. My life have to be fruitful. In order to have this fruitful life in the Spirit, we need first to stay connected with Christ. There is no other way. I'm Christian. I'm a Christian on Sundays. Doesn't work. You have to be connected to Christ, with Christ, every day, every hour, every minute of your life. He says that without Him, we can do nothing. Apart from Him, you can do nothing. And I will tell you more in a more simple way. We are nothing without Him. We can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. And you, you may say, Pastor, we see many things without Jesus. They are going 
and Jesus spoke about them. They are wandering like sheep without shepherds, lost. They don't have meaning of life. They tell you they have, they don't have. I can tell you they don't have. I know many people in this town. I know a family that they go from a party to another party to another party to another party and you don't understand what I'm telling the, the same day they attend four three parties and you you, you didn't know this city has many parties né? there is many parties here especially among the Brazilians they love parties when the Sun shines they are doing party so they go from party to party and you invite them to come to the church. I don't have time, I have to go to the party. Party, 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 party. And drinking and eating and then speaking all this. But they don't have meaning. They don't have meaning in their lives. They are looking for something to fulfill their lives. And they can't stop because if they stop they get depressed if they stop they they will have problem they don't have time to for their children they don't have time for their wives for their husbands because they can't stop they don't know what is to be in the presence of the Lord for some moments or hours or minutes whatever but to have this relationship to be connected with him, with him and to be able to speak with your Lord and know that he is listening to you and he will answer your prayers. They don't know what is that. And you can say, Pastor, I'm a Christian for 20, for 50, for 500 years. And I, I, I don't know if I ever heard the voice of the Lord, but you are here because he sustained you to hear. Because he brought you to here. And you know what? Do you know that parts of your life that you didn't understand or you don't understand until today? But when you start to see the big picture, you see, wow, how God worked in my life. How God did this, did that. And I, I don't know how it all happened in my life. I know how. He has a plan in your life. But his biggest plan for you is to use you in his hands. Is to make you share this love, this bottle of diamond that you have been hidden for so many times while many people are dying and you should be talking about Jesus. I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about Jesus because the name of your church can't change nobody. The name of your church can't transform nobody, but the name of Jesus is powerful in itself to change lives. He changed mine. He changed yours. Now, let's go a little, let's move. So many things. We have to allow to be cleaned by God or cleansed by God. The Bible says, Jesus says in John chapter 15, that the farmer cleans the branches that produce fruits and if you are you can say pastor I have been here for many times I've been producing for producing fruits and now I'm going through these problems I'm going through this ways in my life what's happening to you to me God is cleaning you because you produce fruits he's going to clean you you may say I serve Lord and I'm going through these problems. I'm going through these struggles in my life. He's cleaning you because he works through these ways. The Bible is, is so beautiful because this breaks 
this prosperity theology that you can't suffer, you can't have trials, you can't have anything. Jesus showed that he himself or that God can clean you. And I'll tell you, when he breaks a branch in your life that must be breaked and get off your life, it causes pain sometimes. Because sometimes one of these branches can be something that you are very comforted with and or very conformed with. Sometimes we are comforted and sometimes we are conformed with some situation. And God wants to remove it from your life. And sometimes you don't understand what's happening. My job. I was very well employed in that place. My job was wonderful for me. I was there alone in my a room working on the computer every day and I, I, I did my time I might no you were alone on your room in your room no God wants to put you with someone to talk about his name you know I don't know I'm just wondering that maybe your life can be more useful or more used in his hands and sometimes we don't understand it but third and to finish Jesus shows that to be fruitful we need to participate in the mission of the church when I say church I'm talking about the kingdom we must First, abide in Christ, and then allow to be cleaned by God. And now we must understand that we only can be fruitful, or we only can be considered fruitful if we participate in the mission of the kingdom of God. We have the opportunity to do it every day of our lives. We have the opportunity to say about, to, to speak about Jesus every day of our lives. But we miss these opportunities. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not saying that it's easy to speak about Jesus. It's not. And I will tell you what. It's a spiritual. There is a spiritual battle going on. And you feel shame, you feel like, oh, this is my neighbor. Oh, I don't know. You know what? It's my friend and he knew me before I get saved. He know my secrets. And now how can I tell about Jesus? And you go on and you go on and you go on. And you know what? There was a man. And... He was going through many problems and then somebody invited him to come to the church, spoke about Jesus to him, and he came to the church. And when he came, the door of the church, his neighbor was the greeter. And are you Christian? Yes, I am. Oh, you are my neighbor for five years. Haven't you noticed that I tried to kill myself for three times? Didn't you see the police cars in front of my, ha my house? Didn't you notice that my marriage was blow up because I didn't know Jesus? Didn't you notice that my son died on drugs because you didn't tell me about your Jesus? That you claim to, claim to be your, and this is what I'm telling you. It can be a precious treasure for you. But the kingdom of God must be shared. It's not something that you dig a hole and put there in your heart and that's it. When you die with that, for you and you alone. Jesus is calling you to share his love. You have a neighbor that maybe is dying. 
You have a neighbor that maybe his children are in drugs. You have a neighbor that maybe his wife is sick or they are having trouble or problems in their marriage. And you're here with your suit, with your tie. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus is calling you to be Christian outside of the church, not inside of the church only. He's calling you to share this love, this amazing grace that you sing here in the church, outside of the church. He's calling you for more than that, to be church outside of this temple and preach and share his love with people that are dying. They are dying. And you and I are responsible for their lives. We say all the time, we want to we see this town transformed. Do your work. I have to do my work and we will see this town transformed for the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. Close your eyes. The ushers can come to charity. Lord, <laughs> I don't know if I'm glad or if I'm sad today. You know my heart. You know the love I have for souls. You know the love of this church for souls. Lord, you know my intention was not to beat or hurt someone. And you know how I, I prayed this week for you to speak into the hearts this today, the morning. Because I can't be conformed to, to this world. I can't accept the fact that we are church. We are your church. We have the treasure. We have the, the weapon in our hands. We have the Holy Spirit in our lives. And sometimes we don't act as we have. As we are. We, we are so lazy sometimes lord i can't convince nobody i can't convince anybody you can you can work in our hearts you already did your work you already saved us you already died in the cross on the cross you already gave your life you already shed your blood on the cross to save us lord and now we are here we want to do more than what we've been doing. I want to do more than what I've been doing, oh Lord. I want to do more for you. I want to, Lord, empower us. It's not easy to share about your name. I understand that. And it's because the disciples came out of the prison and gathered together and said, let's pray for boldness. Because we need boldness. We need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need, the oh Lord, this empowerment to be witnesses of you wherever we go. With our lives, with the fruit of the Spirit. But we have to speak about your name. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we may understand today that we have, we have this great commission to fulfill and we have to do we have to do it paul he spoke about his obligation he felt like he had this obligation to speak about your name lord i want you empower us for us to understand that we have this obligation to go speak about your name and make disciples of all nations make disciples of all nations in Jesus name father I pray for this elements 
that you prepared for us. We believe God in your word. We believe, Lord, that you gave your life for us. And this is the life that we need. Lord, I want to pray for the bread. That is your body. The symbol of your body. I pray that today, this communion may symbolize a difference in our lives. Not just to come here as family, but to be aware that we have to go and bring more, more, attract more people to this family. Give us your strength through this bread. Empower us. In Jesus' name I pray. Can you? Lord, I pray for this juice that is the symbol of your blood that you shed for us on the cross. What an amazing grace. What a, what a love. Nothing compares to you, O oh Lord. Not because you loved us, but because you are the love of God for us. There is nothing in this world that can compare to your love. Mainly because you, cho you chose us. We were not able to be here by, by ourselves, but you draw us to you. You attract us to you. You loved us. And here we are. Lord, this is the new covenant of your blood. That you may strengthen us and empower us today to do your works in Jesus' name. Lord, and as we live here today, we live for your glory. <laughs> Lord, if we meet whoever, our neighbors, the supermarket attendant, whatever, we can say that you, you are the reason of our lives. Lord, in Jesus' name, we leave this place today to your glory, to glorify your name, and to share your love, to share this treasure that we have. And we don't want to hide or dig a hole and, and, and hide this treasure. We want to share this treasure to make your name known in this, in this earth. And your name, only your name, will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>